Hey everyone, CJ here, bringing you all an update on the latest Dungeons and Dragons campaign setting announced by Wizards of the Coast earlier this week. We will be getting an official release of Ravnica on the 20th of November later this year, after we get the Waterdeep focused campaign books, Dragon Heist at 18th of September and Dungeon of the Mad Mage at 13th of November. I will talk in greater detail about Ravnica in another video, but for now I am going to talk about the other setting that wizards have stealthily released without much fanfare, the Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron. It is the return of a popular campaign setting that was introduced in 3rd edition and was also used in 4th edition. It is currently available digitally at Dungeon Masters Guild and Drive-Thru RPG. I am going to review this product. But before we zip into the Magitek world of Eberron with its lightning rails and elemental airships, there are a few things that you must know before getting this module. Because they might be immediate deal breakers for some of you. Rather than wasting your time and make you watch the whole video, let me just start by telling you what they are right now. The setting and the character options inside it is not Adventurer's League legal. So if you are playing in Adventurer's League, it means that you can't use anything in here for the official organized play. At least in the immediate future, because this book is not a full campaign book, the Adventurer's League admins are optimistic about this product though, and may create their own original products or adventures based on the material. But currently, there are no concrete plans. You also need to know that everything in here are playtest materials. It is not a complete product. They are subject to change, but the updates will be free due to the nature of digital distribution. They will inform you via email if they've made any revision. In fact, not long after its release, they've made a quick update just to take out the sentence that says that this is a playtest material. Maybe it's due to the displeasure shown by some online commenters, but I don't think it's going to change Wizards' approach towards this project. According to Mike Burrows, the Artificer class will be included in this book eventually and wizards will let you print it on demand once the book's content is finalized. Alright, now that we've got that out of the way, let's look at all the cool stuff you're getting in the current version of this ebook. You get tons of player options and chock a block of lore. The first chapter starts with the general lore of the world of Eberron and describes recent in-world events that form the current geopolitical landscape. For a hundred years, the five nations of the continent of Corfair had been embroiled in a devastating war, called the Last War. Optimistically named so because some people hope that it will be the last war they will ever see when the five nations sign the Treaty of Thronehold. But the event that led the nations into signing the treaty is a very mysterious one. It is a tragedy of unprecedented scale that shook all five nations, called the Morning. Accounts of the events vary. But some say that on one unremarkable day, for unknown reasons, that grey mist began to spread from Metron, the capital city of Sire, one of the five nations. Those caught in the mist are transformed horrifically, and the effects caused the death of over a million Syrians. As it continued to spread, it engulfed the nation whole. As the shadow of the mist lingered over Shire, fear and uncertainty brought the nations to the negotiating table. And that's how the war ended. The adventure starts two years after the treaty was signed, and your players will have to contend with the aftermath of a century-long war and the grey mist that hung over Mornland, where the nation formerly known as Sire used to stand. There is a lot of lore and location information in this book that can help you bring out the neo-noir flavor of the setting. Even if you play in your own campaign, it is still a pretty good read if you haven't got the splat book from previous editions. The lore of the world is not evenly distributed though. You will find mostly general information on the five other continents around the world. Most of the lore is centered around the continents of Corvair and its many nations, but there is a pinpoint focus on Shar, the city of towers. You get a detailed breakdown of the city, the economy, facilities, and the lives of those living in different parts of town. You are provided with many ideas on how to start an adventure from various points in the city. It is pretty much an idea warehouse, and you can steal parts from it to launch your own homebrew campaign setting. Alright, now let's look at the player options. Currently, the Artificer class is not included in the product. Mike Murrells say that it's coming, but we don't know when. What we currently have though are the Dragon Mark options and the new races. 
We've got Changeling, Calistar, Shifter, and Warforged. We saw some of them in 2015 in the Unearthed Arcana playtest, but they have been updated and Calistar is added to the roster. This race have appeared in previous edition before. They are humans who have formed a bond with spiritual creatures called Korai through their bloodline. Most Korais are evil creatures with dark plan for Eberron, but the ones that had formed the bond with the Calistar's ancestors are the good Korais who have rebelled against the evil ones. They have pretty good ability score spread, and their traits boost their mental defenses and gives them some utility. If you want to get the race option information, you can download the latest Unearthed Arcana version for free from the official website. It is exactly the same as the ones in the book. You can find the link in the webpage in the description section below. One thing I have noticed about this new batch of races is that, for me, the power creep is becoming really obvious. The Warforged has the integrated protection trait that lets them choose their armor mode after a long rest, as long as they fulfill the prerequisite. The heavy plating mode starts with 16 AC plus as much bonus as your character's proficiency. I think this trait is just incredibly overpowered. Imagine a player playing a Gish character by taking a level in Fighter before spending the rest of the levels as a wizard. That character can have 22 armor class at level 17. Even plus 3 magical plate armor can only get you as high as 21. On top of that, this feature doesn't have any strength requirement, and the character can still use a shield. I think a lot of min-maxers will love to play as Warfor. Shifter is another powerful race. Their traits are generally useful, but their shifting ability gives them temporary hit points according to their character's level plus constitution modifier. The effect is practically as good as increasing their hit dice by one size. It is not as crazy as Warforged, but it is still very good compared to many other choices. The Changeling is quite decent. Nothing stands out like the other two. Their ability to change their appearance have some limits, like how it doesn't transform their clothes, but there isn't a duration limit, so it is pretty useful for long-term spying mission. Wizards of the Coast isn't really worried about giving out these race options for free because there is still a ton more options in the book in the form of Dragon Marks. Dragon Marks only appear on individuals of specific bloodline. It gives them magic-like abilities and special powers related to the type of marks they have. Families bearing the marks have formed powerful houses to advance their ambitions and cause. They can be as powerful as kings and queens, but not every heir of the house may manifest Dragon Mark on their skin. Getting it is quite random, but when they do, the mark usually appear during adolescence, and it has the possibility of developing into greater dragon mark later on. But player characters can develop it by taking it as a feat. There are 12 types of dragon marks for 13 houses. The shadow dragon mark is divided into two houses due to a rift within the house, story reasons. But in terms of gameplay mechanics, there aren't any mechanical differences between the two houses since it is the type of dragon mark that affects your character, not the house. Dragon marks have appeared in previous editions. In 5th edition, you incorporate it into your character during character creation. Different dragon marks are restricted to certain character races, and it either replaces the character's racial traits completely or just the sub-race traits, depending on the race that can take it. It really opens up your play options. To further expand the options, there are also aberrant dragon marks, these are rogue dragon marks that can be taken as feats by any character who doesn't already have a dragon mark. In story term, it is an unpredictable and dangerous kind of dragon mark that appears randomly on people, but more often on the children of mixed bloodline from different houses. Besides the power, it grants undesirable side effects on the recipient. The mark may whisper unintelligible words into the character's ears, give them horrific nightmares after using it, or even become a constant cause of pain. Plus, the few pages of magic items, you are getting quite a lot of contents out of this book. Well, I am not hard to please in general, but I understand that some people may not want to get this book because it feels like an early access Kickstarter game. It is released without all the features, and you don't even know when you are getting the final product. But in general, I have faith that we can hold the D&D team to their words, even if I am not too optimistic that this project will be completed anytime soon, because I imagine that they will be too busy working on three D&D products that's coming this year. 
they must be on a really crazy deadline crunch right now. On another note, I also have a sneaking suspicion that they may have shafted Eberron for Ravnica. I mean, the two of them have kind of a similar focus, isn't it? Ravnica is the titular city of the setting. Obviously, we are going to get a heavy dose of city lore. It might get similar treatment as Sharn in Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron, only with different contents. The 10 guilds of Ravnica may also get similar treatment to the Dragonmark houses, but maybe not. They might have pivoted with their design focus for Eberron and Ravnica early on. Because of the similarity in focus, to me, it feels as if the D&D team were originally working on Eberron, until they were told that the next official setting had to be a tie-in with the Magic the Gathering setting, so they choose Ravnica to save time. I'm probably wrong though, I might be getting too cynical. Even if it is true, we might end up seeing two different executions of similar urban exploration concept. Usually, in game development, there are many ideas getting tossed around, and sometimes there are some gems that they have overlooked in the cutting room floor. Those gems could have shined if they were given another chance. So, this parallel development may turn out to be a very interesting experiment for the D&D team at Wizards. They get to test out different execution of the same concept across two different products and see which one works better. Actually, it is three, isn't it? When it comes to urban setting, with Waterdeep coming out around the same period. Well, I guess it will be interesting to see if they can make three urban settings and keep it fresh. Once again, I must remind you all that this is just speculation. I could be completely wrong, but tell me what do you think? Will you be basing your campaigns in one of these cities? If so, which one? Sharn, Ravnica, or Waterdeep? If you want to get the Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron, you can use the link in the description below. It is an affiliate link, but if you have been watching the review, I am sure you can see that I have been very fair with my assessment. It is really up to you whether you want to get the book. Alright? That's it for the review. Hope you find it useful. CJ, over and out.